Welcome back, everyone. In problem number four of the Python in five problems video series, we're going to take a look at finding unknown side lengths for right triangles, specifically situations in which we would need to make that calculation repeatedly. So we'll start with the case in which we need to find the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So what would the pseudo code for that look like? Well, pretty simple, actually, let's set up a situation here where the user is asked to enter the lengths of uh, the two legs, and then Python calculates the hypotenuse. So our first step would be to read the leg one and leg two length values from the user. We could then take those and use the side length relationship for right triangles that is you know, commonly referred to as the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the hypotenuse length. So we'll uh, notice here that I have this arranged, it's solved for hypotenuse. So we would take the square root of the sum of the squares of the two legs. And then we would just print that result. So we'd print the hypotenuse value. Now, why are we doing this problem here? I mean, this looks quite simple. Uh, a couple of reasons. First of all, I'd like to kind of tell you how you can go about using the square root function in Python, because we haven't seen that yet. And I'd also like to then modify this problem to give the user a choice as to whether they want to find the hypotenuse or one of the other leg lengths. And that's going to introduce something called an if else statement. So that's, uh, that's where we're going with this. But for now, let's take this, uh, this problem here where we're finding the hypotenuse and see what it would look like in Python. So we will start by importing the math library. Now you might say, why do we need to import the math library here? We've seen this before um, when we were using pi, if we wanted to call up a value for pi, but here we need to import it because we're going to be using a square root function. So that is in the math library. And we know how to do that. We just hit import space math. So it's imported. And now we're ready to read the uh, values for the leg lengths from the user. Okay, so read values for leg lengths. All right, a little drink of water here. So we'll call the first one leg one. And that will be an input from the user. And we'll, uh, we'll make the prompt say, please, um, enter the length of leg one. Okay, a little colon and a space there. And we'll do the same thing for leg two. Now, before we do that, remember that um, the value that uh, is read from this input is going to be interpreted as a string. Now, we want to use that value in a calculation, so we need it to be an integer or a floating point number here. So we can convert it. Now, we've seen how to do that in the past. We can put all of this in brackets. And if we want an integer, we could type int here. Or if we want a floating point uh, number, we could type float here. But I'm going to show you another option called eval, where we uh, type eval. And that does the same uh, type of thing. It, it takes the value that's input and converts it into something that can be used in this calculation here. So yeah, we'll do the exact same thing for leg two. We'll say leg two equals eval. We want an input from the user, and we'll make the prompt say, please enter the length of leg two. Okay, so we have our values there, and now we can actually make our hypotenuse length calculations. We'll say, calculate the uh, length of the hypotenuse. And to do that, we'll just call it HYP, it's fine. And we have to use now we have to use our square root function right here. So that has to be called up from the math library. So we'll say math dot and for square root, it's SQRT. And everything that you put in brackets after that is what we'll be uh, taking the square root of. So we want the square root of leg one squared plus leg two squared. So we can say leg one squared plus leg two squared. And that's our hypotenuse. And finally, we can just print that result. So we can say print hypotenuse length. And that will be print. And we'll put maybe some words in here too. Uh, the length of the hypotenuse is, and maybe we'll round it to uh, whatever three decimal places. So round hypotenuse value to three decimal places. Uh, there we go. So that should hopefully work fine. Fingers crossed. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, enter the length of leg one. Let's use something uh, 
Now we're familiar with here, maybe five. Enter the length of leg two, let's say 12. And there, as predicted, the length of the hypotenuse is 13. So you can easily run that again. Maybe uh, this time we'll use some decimals. And there we go, rounded to three decimal places. Okay, now let's modify our program so that the user can choose whether they want to find the hypotenuse or one of the other leg lengths. So what's that going to look like? Okay, a little bit more complicated. We have to introduce some new, some new syntax, uh, a, a new concept here. So the first thing that we would want to ask the user in that case is what do you want to find? Um, are you finding the hypotenuse or are you finding one of the other leg lengths? And then of course there are two possible options. Option number one is we're finding the hypotenuse. So if we're finding the hypotenuse, we'll do uh, some calculations, the ones we just did actually, or else we will do different calculation if we're not finding the hypotenuse. So that's why it's called an if else statement. Uh, once we get that input from the user, we have to make a decision. If we're finding the hypotenuse, we'll do this. Otherwise, or, or else, we'll do this. Okay. So if we are finding the hypotenuse, we already know what that calculation looks like. We read the leg lengths, calculate the hypotenuse, and print it. If we're not finding the hypotenuse, we're going to read the hypotenuse and leg one values, and then use those to calculate leg two, which we'll print. Okay, so what does this look like in Python. Well, let's see here. Let's bring up our, our compiler here again. The good news is we can reuse all of this stuff here because that's what's going to happen if we are calculating the hypotenuse. That won't change. We just get have to do a, a couple of extra steps here. So first thing we want to do is we want to read the type of question and that is um, hypotenuse or not. Okay, so how will we get that? Well, let's say we'll make a variable, Variable, we'll call it type. And the prompt for that user input will be, uh, what could we say here? I would say, are you finding the hypotenuse? And then we can give them a hint as to how to enter that answer. So we'll say enter Y for yes or N for no. Okay, and that should uh, that should be good. Now, when they do input that value, the user inputs that value, it's going to be interpreted as a string, and that's actually fine for where we're going. Now we have to make a call. Based on what the user enters, are we going to do the hypotenuse calculation or the leg calculation? And this is where we have to enter the if-else statement, and here's how uh, we do it. So I'll make a comment first, and we'll just say uh, find the unknown side length. And here it goes. So we're going to say if the variable type, that's what we called it up here, is a Y. So if they enter Y now, we have to be careful here. If we want to check if type is Y, we have to use a double equal sign. And the reason is that it, it, the reason for that is that we're using a, a comparison operator here. The double equal sign compares two things. And we're really saying if the type is this. So when we're assigning values, we use a single equal sign. Right, but if we're comparing values, you have to use the double equal sign. So don't forget that, and also don't forget that the input here is a string. It's interpreted as a string. So we make sure you put this in quotations here, because if you don't, um, we're going to run into a problem because it's going to be uh, it's it's not going to know you're looking for a string. Now the other thing you might want to consider is that the user could enter a lowercase y instead of a capital Y. That's not a big deal. We could just say or. And that's how you can literally type or type is uh, lowercase y. So you can just check for uppercase or lowercase. And much like a loop, we want to put a colon here. Now, that's the, the first part here. We're saying if we're finding hypotenuse, do this. So like a loop, we still need to do some indenting here. So we'll do that just using the tab key. And all this stuff is going under the if condition. Okay. Now, if you were not modifying, if you were just typing this up from scratch, as soon as you hit enter after this colon, it would automatically indent for you. All right. So that's what we want to happen if uh, if we're finding the hypotenuse. But what if we're not finding the hypotenuse? Well, that's when we need to go back, get rid of that indent, and say else colon. 
So now we're, gonna, now we're saying if this doesn't happen, in other words, if the user enters n or anything else for that matter, we're going to do a different calculation. And that calculation is this, okay? So you could kind of type in something similar to this, um, but make it correspond to what we want to calculate. I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna actually copy this, just highlight it, hit control C, and then paste it here, indented. And then I'll just uh, kind of modify it as I go. So read values for, well, this time we'd want to read the hypotenuse and the leg. And this time too, the first thing I'm going to ask for will be maybe the hypotenuse. So we'll say, please enter the length of the hypotenuse this time. And well, I said I was going to read leg one, so I'll change this to leg one. Please enter the length of... Uh, we could just say here, uh, the other leg, the other leg. Okay, so now we have those two values. Now we're not calculating the length of the hypotenuse, so I'll change my comment. So please, okay, we'll calculate the length of the unknown side, maybe. And how are we going to get that? Remember, we're calculating leg two. User inputs hypotenuse in leg one, so leg two. So square root of what would have to be, it would have to be the hypotenuse squared minus the input, which was leg one squared. And print the unknown side length, I guess we could say. Unknown side length. And the length of the, we just say other side or unknown side is, and we don't want to print the hypotenuse, we want to print leg two. And we're around to three decimal places. Okay, so I moved through that fairly quickly. I'm, I likely made a mistake. So let's set, let's run the program, see what happens. And if there are errors, we will fix them. So here we go, run. Okay, so there it is. Are you finding the hypotenuse? Yes or no? Well, I'll enter a capital Y. So I got to enter the length of leg one. Let's just go with three. Leg two is four. Hypotenuse should be five. It is. Okay, great. That worked. Let's try it now. Same type of thing. Let's do it now, but I'll enter a lowercase y. Oh, still seems to be working. 2.9. Oh, we did one of those weird things there. I'm just going to run the program again. Uh, leg 1, we'll say 2.9. Leg 2 will be 8.7. Seems to be working great. Let's try to find now one of the other legs. So if I run it, are you finding the hypotenuse? This time, let's say no. Ah, so it asked me to enter the length of the hypotenuse. Let's say uh, 24. Oh, actually, we'll say 25. Because then we'll see if it works properly. Please enter the length of the other leg, which is 24. So we should get uh, 7, I think. Oops. And a weird... Uh, I don't know why it does that. i got to figure that out. I'm just going to run it again. Not find a hypotenuse. Uh, the hypotenuse is 24. Other length is 24. 25 and 24, sorry. So we should get seven. Yeah, there it is. So it seems to be working great. So that's how you can use an if else statement. The indenting is very important here. So keep that in mind, as are the colons, uh, the, the double equal sign there for comparing. So a bunch of new things here. Uh, I hope you find that useful. Now go and, uh, go and play around with it, try some stuff out. And uh, we have one more problem to look at in the, uh, in the next video. See you then.